I find myself pretty frequently up on a soapbox exclaiming how amazing Sim Hub is and how much it can do for you. Uh, enough that instead of continuing to answer questions uh, for, for the people around me, I figured I'd just put together a little video on what it can do, what I use it for, and how it can help you. Uh, so this is what Sim Hub looks like. It is a free download uh, from simhubdash.com. There is a, a paid version of it. Uh, it's a $5 donation. You unlock a few extra features. I recommend you do that if you do find yourself enjoying it to help support the developer. Not necessary by any means, however. Uh, it can do a whole lot for you, um, as much or as little of it as you want. In my particular use case, I use it for three distinct things. I use it for a dash, uh, specifically uh, this little tablet on the left-hand side of my cockpit. It powers that. I use it for uh, the wind sim on the back of my cockpit. So these fans right here and here are powered by an Arduino on the back of the, of the cockpit that um, SimHub runs here. It will upload the, the sketch to the Arduino. You don't need to know programming. It will, uh, it will take care of all of that for you. Uh, and then power that uh, effect, whatever you want it to be. In my case, I'm, I'm using speed. So telemetry out from iRacing goes to SimHub uh, and turns the speed at which you're traveling into a signal that goes to the motors um, that directs wind at your face which is what you want. Uh, and then I also use it for, for base shakers. So I have four, uh, four big tactile shakers, uh, a butt kicker advance in my pedal tray. I have two LFEs under my left and right butt cheeks respectively, uh, and then another advance under the, the center of my seat. Um, you can do a whole lot with this. Uh, I'll just kind of briefly go over uh, what I use it for. Um, so, you can customize what sound channel it's going out through. Um, you don't need a separate sound card for this necessarily. I have uh, headphone audio coming through USB to an amp DAC combo. I have the big speakers on my desk, which you could see right there, uh, powered through optical audio off the motherboard. Uh, and then I'm using the onboard sound, the 7.1 for uh, the base shakers. So you can see the way we have it configured in SimHub now, we have eight channels. I'm just using four of those. Uh, so two headphone jacks in the back, left and right, split. Uh, and then I'm mapping the effects to each of these intelligently. You can also vary effects uh, volume on a per effect basis, per channel per effect basis, and a thousand more uh, things individually. Uh, so to, to kind of briefly go over what I use it for, um, just, just kind of a, a surface overview of the effects that I have mapped to the shakers now. Uh, at the top here, you can see we have RPM mapped. Uh, we have an effect frequency range of 20 hertz to 40 hertz. Uh, so at, at the lowest RPM, we're getting a 28 hertz tone, which is like a kind of a deep, deep rumble up to more of a like deeper vibration effect at 40 hertz. We also have a little bit of white noise programmed into this. So uh, plus or minus one hertz in either direction for a total of three. So let's say 27, 28, and 29 flickering between all three of those uh, at random at, at a particular RPM range. So it feels a little more realistic than you might get out of just a plain tone and you can customize that as you want. Uh, and then we also have a response curve set. So at a lower RPM, we get a bigger effect. And then as the car is more in motion, we don't oversaturate what we can feel with a bunch of useless RPM information that might be washing out more useful effects like what the, what the tires are doing and what the suspension is doing. Uh, and that is all completely customizable in a really cool way. Uh, gear shift. We have uh, both the bass effect and a harmonic effect. So we have two tones going, a 12 hertz response at 55% volume, uh, and then a 30 hertz response at a little higher volume. So we get um, 
like a, a two tone response out of that. You get both the deep thunk and a little and a little more uh, higher vibration out of it. Uh, wheel lock and wheel slip. We have in two separate ranges. So wheel lock is 35 to 44 hertz. We have a little bit of white noise programmed into this three hertz plus or minus in either direction uh, to get that kind of tires skidding over the pavement effect. Uh, and then a little less white noise in the higher frequency, 44 to 50 hertz range for wheel slip. So um, something like the Skippy where you're doing a lot of sliding, you can immediately tell when the car is moving under you uh, through the tone that's played into your uh, extremities, into your feet, into your ass, uh, into your back. And then we can customize when we get that effect, um, how quickly it ramps up. Uh, and a whole whole bunch more and then we have some kind of supplementary effects road rumble road vibration uh, and road impacts and we can set each of these to a frequency response we want in my case i have both of these doubled because i have uh, a butt kicker advanced in the front and i have butt kicker lfes in the back those can do uh, two different things uh, two different hertz ranges uh, will work well on either on either shaker. The LFEs will go a little bit lower. So say for impacts, I have the LFEs set to, to hit a little bit lower uh, as a result of that. Um, and then the last thing I wanna cover is to go back up to the top and talk a little bit about what the dash can do. Uh, I specifically exist almost exclusively in iRacing. Uh, I use this really, really, really fantastic dash that a guy called Romain Rob has been making uh, pretty much full time, I think, for for a couple of years now, probably. Uh, it is specifically called the Universal iRacing Dash. Uh, you can download his whole collection here, but this is this is where my money is specifically. Um, it works phenomenally for iRacing and is phenomenally powerful at the same time. So uh, without iRacing running, I can't show you a whole lot about it, but let's go in here. We'll look at the dash and say edit dashboard. Uh, we can customize what's on this first screen, but this is just kind of uh, a splash screen to open up once you get into the game. Your primary layout screen will look something like this. So a whole bunch of useful information on here, and this is just one of the many pages that you can map to this dash. This is where I'll be most of the time. Uh, you have an RPM bar up top. Um, when I'm driving something that doesn't have a screen on the wheel, um, like uh, Skippy, oval cars, trucks, rally cross, that stuff, I'll leave this on an RPM gauge at the top. But at the same time, you can also turn this into a delta bar um, showing uh, positive or negative gains over, over your fast lap. Uh, same thing with the gear indicator. If you have that on your wheel already, you can flip that to a static map to show you uh, track positions of people around you and get a little more information than you might out of a relative box. Delta best, best clean lap, last lap. Estimated lap is hugely useful to know um, how how fast you're coming in, particularly for qualifying. If you if you maybe don't want to qualify up near the front uh, or just to just have a little bit of advance notice where you're going to place um, lap-wise. Uh, and then a whole bunch of other information. A lot of this is customizable. Uh, and then you also have a pit screen that can be turned on automatically when you enter or exit the pits, or you can flip to it um, as you need it. We get a bunch of cool stuff in here. We can control fuel if you're not already using Crew Chief to do that, which I would probably recommend. It's a lot simpler. Uh, but we also get a little countdown to our pit box, which is nice. And we get a little map as well to show uh, who's coming up behind you as you're coming out of the pits or whatever the case may be. Uh, I'll close that out and go into the additional plugins with the latest version of this um, dash. He built this additional plugins page that can do a whole lot. Um, specifically, here is where we would now add or subtract pages. So these seven pages are what the dash can display. I specifically have a relative and standings page up here. Uh, both of those will show the I rating and safety rating of the people around you, as well as last lap times, expected lap times, all super useful information when you're out on the track to see what sort of pace the guy in front of you or behind you is running. 
uh, as well as how uh, cautious maybe you need to be around them, either letting them get by or getting by them yourself. Uh, and then I have a static map on as well that will show you everyone's position on the track, uh, as well as specifically what I leave it on for is um, air temp and track temp. And then we can go in here and change a bunch of stuff, um, change the layout, the look, uh, how much fuel you want to add, uh, and a whole bunch of other of other things. Um, overall, it is just a really phenomenal piece of software. I cannot recommend it enough. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, if you haven't played with it before, I would encourage you to do so. It is free to get started. Um, and you know, so much of the sim world is not readily available products that you can just go out and plug in and play with. It's all DIY, and this is a huge toolkit in your box um, to, to get your sim set up the way that you want it to work and to do what you want it to do. And it's just massively powerful that for that with what you can do, what you can get out of it, and what it, what it enables you to do. Um, in your, own, in your own DIY process with all of this. So if you have questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Um, I'd be happy to share my um, shaker profiles or win profiles with, uh, with anyone out there that has questions. Otherwise, I'll wish you the best. See you on track.